Welcome to the video lecture for the midterm sales presentation for the online selling principles class at Gateway Technical College. For an overview of the assignment, we are going to be serving as the sales rep representative of the Town and Country Resort and Convention Center in San Diego, California. This is an actual hotel and convention center. You can find information on the hotel and convention center at town country.com uh, you received a request for proposal from a customer and has asked been has asked to for you to present your proposal to a member of the executive board of the group at the end of the presentation you should be able to do the following number one identify the needs of the customer some of those needs are going to be supplied to you in the RFP proposal that is in the Blackboard shell and other pieces of information you're going to have to ask the customer and pull that information from the customer. You are going to be required for you to use visual aids during your presentation. You're going to have to configure a product solution for your customer and your goal is to close the sale. The scenario, your client is hosting an educational conference for 400 people. Some attendees are local, some will be flying in. Total number of attendees of the conference, again, is 400. Uh, the customer is looking for full service convention services, hotel rooms for overnight stays, meeting rooms, food and beverage, and audiovisual needs. In regards to the scenario for hotel room needs, the room block or the amount of rooms that they're going to request per night is as follows. 20 rooms on Wednesday night, 100 rooms on Thursday night, 150 rooms on Friday night, 150 rooms on Saturday night, 10 rooms on Sunday night. In order for you to identify how much the room costs are, you are going to have to go to the hotel's website. Um, I'm giving you the flexibility to decide which Wednesday through Sunday time frame the conference is going to be. What you're going to do is look up those rooms, identify the room rates from what, the, what they call the rack rate or the retail rate on their site is going to be. When we talk about meeting room needs, uh, for Thursday we need one room for a reception uh, during the evening for 300 people. Uh, Friday and Saturday we're going to need a general session room, uh, a room for general sessions and meal functions that is going to be able to seat 400 people. Uh, keep in mind that not only is there sessions going on, but people are going to have to be in a situation where they're going to be able to eat. Uh, we have four breakout rooms for training sessions. Uh, and each, each one of those breakout rooms, uh, we're going to need them to have... Um, to seat 400 people, so a minimum of 100 per room is what we're going to need. Uh, in your scenario handout, uh, they're looking for 150 per room, and the reason why we listed 150 per room is uh, in case you have one presenter who might be a bigger draw than another presenter, gives you opportunity to have overflow. And then you're going to need another room separate that's going to needs to be at least 4,000 square feet uh, for poster boards, uh, basically just big easels that are going to be in the room, um, but there's so many of them, we'll need up to 4,000 square feet to accommodate that need. Now what we have here is the uh, one of the pages uh, pulled from the book, or from the handout that you have on your Blackboard site on the layout of the individual ballrooms. The reason why I picked this ballroom, not because it'd be a ballroom that you would technically use, you can choose to use it, uh, but I want to show you how the rooms, uh, how to decide sizes of rooms, etc. Uh, what we have here on the left hand corner, you'll see that you'll have four rooms listed, even though you only see three here on the right hand side. Basically what that's telling you is that the Regency Ballroom itself can set 600 people theater style. Now we also have the ability to break that room up into threes. And so, in essence, and on some of the other ballrooms, all the other rooms you'll be able to do this. 
is you could connect what they're calling the Windsor and Hampton together and keep the Sheffield separate. And so you can separate this into three rooms, you could separate it into two rooms, or you could make this ballroom one big room. And so the, the walls that you see there are what we call soft walls. They can um, be added or subtracted to change the size of those individual rooms. And so that's how you see four rooms being listed in this uh, scenario. For audiovisual needs. Uh, general session room needs an LCD projector with a large screen, a uh, four microphones, a sound system, and a head table at the front of the room. For breakout rooms, we'll need an LCD projector with screen, uh, portable sound, four microphones, a podium, and a head table. One thing to identify here is that the screen in the a in the general session room needs to be significantly larger than the screen in the breakout room. In the AV uh, pricing guide, you'll see that there is a $20 fee for a screen. That's going to be the breakout room screen. And then the rear projection screen is what you're going to need for the general session rooms. When we look at meal functions, Thursday, uh, a reception that's going to have uh, light food and a cash bar. Uh, when it comes to cash bar, you don't pay for the beverages being served, but you do pay a bartender fee, potentially. And so you have to look through the menu to see uh, if they list a bartender fee. If they don't list a bartender fee, then there isn't one. Uh, some convention centers will charge you uh, a bartender fee up until your uh, group pay might have a $200 bar tab, and then the bartender fee is waived. Uh, under the light food component, you're going to look in the buffet men uh, the the food and beverage menu and look under hors d'oeuvres. For Friday, we need a breakfast for 400, a lunch for 400, and a dinner for 400. Uh, for Saturday, we need a breakfast and lunch for 400. We're going to do a dinner a dinner awards dinner, uh, and what that is going to do the awards dinner is kind of the same thing as the Friday dinner but it's maybe give them a better meal option for that because it's more of a bigger to do than the Friday dinner. Uh, your assignment is to use a visual aid or a site seller and create a formal proposal, identify additional needs, and close the sale. We talk about using a visual aid. You look at the video that I have under video lectures for the midterm uh, sales presentation video how do you use your visual aid? Usually for a presentation like this, you would create a binder or a folder that you would give to the client. How do you interact with the visual aid? One thing you want to keep away from doing is to just hand that visual aid to the customer. And when you just hand something to the customer, I will start flipping through it as you're trying to talk. I don't know if I'm on the right page. So you want to be able to, to be able to point at it. So, well, if you look at page five of your handout here, you'll see that we are an award-winning facility, whatever you might be pointing out. But you want to point to that specific piece on that page. It's important to realize what the visual aid is there for. Too many times people use the visual aid for their use in the presentation when really the visual aid is there to keep the attention or help keep the attention of the people you're presenting to. Uh, you want to create a formal proposal. Now where this becomes tricky is you're going to want to create something where during the presentation you're getting them to say yes at different points of the presentation and you're signing off and you may be adding or subtracting new figures within based on the information that the client is giving you. And so when we talk about the sales presentation, it's very important for you to understand what your job is. Your job is for them to say yes to this facility now. We don't want them to go back and think about it. You know, they may still make that decision, but at the we want them to say yes since we're in front of them. And so for us to be able to do that, we want them to say yes throughout the different parts of the presentation. And so really the first thing you need to be selling is the town and country conference center and so you want them to say yes to that's to our facility 
Next thing you want them to say yes is to which rooms they're going to be using. And so you're going to say, from a meeting room perspective, all right, I have the Altus ballroom. Here's the rooms I've picked out for you. Or maybe you give them, here's the three different options we could use for your meeting. We could use this ballroom here. We could use this room combination. There's a lot of different room combinations that they have at this specific facility. And so you might say, which one of these do you think is going to meet your needs? They pick one or they say, yes, I feel this is, you can give them a confirmation question. Do you feel this is going to meet your needs? They say yes to that question. Now we know, okay, we've picked this room. We can move to the next item. Then we're going to talk about the hotel rooms. Okay, here's the hotel rooms. Here's our rate. Do you feel these rooms are going to meet your needs? Say yes. All right, we don't have to talk about hotel rooms anymore. Then you're going to talk about AV needs. Boom, boom, boom. You talk about the AV needs. Get those taken care of. Then the biggest ticket item is going to be the food and beverage. And so then you're going to get food and beverage hammered out. Uh, on purpose, I didn't put budget information on in the uh, RFP. And so you'll have to ask your customer, what are you looking at uh, per plate for the breakfast? What are you looking at per plate for the lunch? What are you looking at per plate for the dinners? Then based on their feedback, you will customize, well, here's the three different plate options that I think fall under that $20 number. Here's what we can do for $50. Uh, for dinner, do you want a buffet or do you want a plated meal? So when you look through the menu, the items that say entrees, that's going to be your plated meal. And so think about your traditional way you get served at a restaurant with someone coming and bringing the food to you. The buffets, obviously, we get in line and we pick what we want. And so you need to get feedback from the customer. Do they want to do a buffet or do they want to do the entree? Now, once they make that decision, buffet or entree, what budget dollar are you looking at? And then once you have that information, you can give them specific suggestions on those pieces. And so that's going to be part of identifying those additional needs. And the most important part now, let's say we get them to say yes to, okay, these are the meals we want. You want to make sure you give them a strong close. Too many times, and if you look at the video, one of the things that they do in the video is he kind of gives them an out at the end of, well, you know, um, do you need to talk to your board about that? You want to go to them and say, hey, um, all right, based on the information, it looks like we're going to meet your needs. All you have to do is sign this contract here today, your formal proposal that you have mopped up, Make sure you have a calculator because you may be you're going to be obviously adding more information in there during the presentation. Final amount's going to be X amount of dollars. Uh, if we get a deposit from you today and you sign here today, we can get you started. Now, if your customer comes back like, well, you know, I kind of I don't know if uh, you know it's kind of expensive. I might be looking around. You might say, well, you know, based on our, our feedback, it seems like you're really excited about having the conference here. How about we just do this? Uh, we've got an idea where you are budget-wise. Right now we're slated at $20,000 for food and beverage. Uh, maybe we change some of the meal options, but if you can guarantee me that you're going to spend $20,000 in food and beverage and you can guarantee those hotel rates, why don't we just sign today and we'll hold the space for you? You know, because, you know, we have a lot of people coming into San Diego and I really hate for you to lose this opportunity to be at our facility. And so you're not asking for the full commitment today. You're just getting them to sign for those rooms. And then we can negotiate those other pieces out after that happens. And so the most important thing you have to remember is too many times people come in and start off with, well, we'd really like to have your facility here. It's going to be $100,000 for you to do the meeting. You throw a big number out there this huge number out there, then that becomes a, a barrier right away. You want to talk price at the end. You never talk price in the beginning. Think about times that you've gone shopping and that you went in for the entry level product and someone sold you up because of the features for the higher end product. I've done it where I've walked out of the store and thought, you know, I probably spent more than I wanted to and if I went in the guy said, this is your dollar amount, I wouldn't spend that amount. Salesperson's job is to create value in those items. Now, another thing you'd say, you can give them discounts and say, well, 
because you're going to be here for so many days, you're bringing so many people in, we're anticipating you spend $30,000 in food and beverage or whatever that dollar amount might be, we're going to give you 10% off of the hotel room rates. You want to make sure if you're doing that, that's fine to do, but you want to make sure you create a dollar amount to the customer. We have to create value in that amount. So if we just say we're going to give you 10% off, they may not create value. Just like if I am someone who is interested in taking one class at a college. And I say, well, if you sign up for this class today, you don't have to pay for your textbooks. We need to create a dollar amount value. Because maybe I'm not familiar with sign taking, maybe this is my first college class ever. And so when you talk about the cost of a book, I'm thinking I can go to Barnes & Noble and get a book for $19.95. Not understanding that some textbooks may be over $300. So if I say, well, if you sign up today, you'll get the textbook uh, provided for you, which is a $250 value. Well, now that's giving me some urgency to sign today because now I'm gonna realize, wow, that book's $250. That may not even cross my mind. I might think, ah, I could sign next week when I think about it more. It's only gonna be a $20 difference. $250 might give me some urgency to do it. In regards to doing the presentation, I allow my online students one of three options to do the presentation. Number one is to complete the presentation through Skype, where I would serve as your customer and we would Skype our presentation. Uh, we have, I do get a lot of students actually do that. Um, it tends to be a pretty effective way to judge the presentation. The second item is to record a video upload it to a service like YouTube, send me the link, and then I will grade that video. If you do that, it's important for you to identify or, or to realize that you need to present to someone else. Someone's gotta be serving as your customer. I've had students where they have, quote unquote, what I call sold to the camera, where they're just talking to the camera. I'm looking for dialogue, I need feedback. It's the only way I could truly evaluate how well you are doing this presentation. And then the third way, if technology just isn't your thing, and I will say if you're recording video, um, a lot of students have trouble uploading it, especially if you're using a camera that only records in HD. Uh, you may be looking at, depending on what your internet connection is, you could look at legitimately a 10 to 15 hour up. I've had people uh, uploaded video 10 to 15 hours based on the output that it's sending through. And so uh, the challenge of technology is not a excuse for turning in a light. So just be aware that you're responsible for that. And then the third way that people um, will do it is to create, to do a face-to-face -face video. And not face-to-face -face video, to meet with me face-to-face. -face. And so um, they come to the Gateway Kenosha campus and uh, present the sales presenta presentation to me in person. And so maybe you feel more comfortable doing that. I mean, technology piece isn't 100% up your alley. You could do it that way. The reason why we do this presentation is really to get you ready for your final sales presentation. Uh, we find that the students that participate and complete this assignment do significantly better in their final presentation. It allows me to give you feedback on the presentation, what you did well, um, what you could improve upon. And so the rubric and everything that you'll be graded on for this presentation is going to be the exact same guidelines and requirements that I'm going to be looking for for your final presentation. Um, this presentation is going to take you a lot of work. That's why it's the only thing in this unit. Um, and it's, it's going to take some time for you to, to put towards it. Uh, feel free to contact me if you have any questions regarding it.